Have you ever thought about how people deal with their periods in space? Researchers are testing menstrual cups in orbit with small sensors inside them. Those sensors track things like temperature and movement, helping scientists understand how women's bodies function in microgravity over long missions. I'm Master Pernier, health correspondent with the Philip Project, and here's why that matters. It's vital for long-term missions. You are asking for an astronaut to go to Mars and to put their menstruation on hold for 10 or 20 years. I believe some astronauts are not going to make that choice and maybe decide not to go forward with the mission because they are not comfortable with that. For a long time, space exploration was shaped almost entirely around male bodies. Even basic things like space clothing were not designed with women in mind. Here's something else that's interesting. When you look at the data, women may be better suited for long duration missions. That's because on average, women require less oxygen and food and they tend to cope well with isolation. I had to ask a real astronaut. Shauna Panja is a doctor and astronaut who will likely be making her first space flight in 2026. When we talk about studying women's health in resource-limited remote environments, that is as applicable to space as it is to a rural community on Earth. And so in studying how we can improve menstrual care, women's health, um, and advancing those subjects for women, we can also help uh, advance our most in need communities on Earth. It was a great first step looking at the structural integrity of these menstrual cups when exposed to increased G-forces on a sounding rocket. And I think the next part of this, and me as a physician, I'm really interested in the human in the loop aspect of it. So can these cups stay in place in hypergravity and microgravity environments? So when you design space for women's health, you might also get better data, systems, and science. And that's how space exploration actually moves forward. 